you guys, we made a carnivore chicken and shrimp etouffee with riced chicken. So I take chicken and I, you'll see, but I, it's over riced chicken instead of rice. And so let's give it a taste. Mm -mm -mm. I've lost 180 pounds with a combination of carnivore, keto, and counting calories. I reached my goal in November of 2022. Right now I'm doing an experiment with being carnivore-ish and counting calories. If you want to see the results, stick around and subscribe and we can see how it goes. Don't forget to click the like button. Um, to get my A2 face started, I have to start my chicken, my riced chicken. You can cook your ground chicken any way you want. Um, I cook mine in a crock pot to get it done so I can work on other things as I need to. So I'm going to put my crock pot on low and I'm going to get my chicken in here. This is one pound of chicken. This is not the leanest chicken. You know, they have different kinds. This is just the plain one pound. This I think is great value anyway. Let me get it in there. All right. So I'm going to plop that in there. This is about maybe, it's up to here, so maybe two-thirds cups of water. I'm going to put that in there. I'm not going to add any seasoning. Um, I'm going to let all the seasoning be with the etouffee sauce part. So now I put this lid on here. I got it on low. I'm going to treat this just like I do my ground beef. Every hour, I'll come in and chop it up. And um, yeah, so that's how we get this started. I want you guys to see how I do this. So I've got this kind of chopper. And I just come in and <clears throat> just kind of break it up and separate it every hour. I do this with ground beef. I do it with ground pork. I do it with ground chicken. <coughs> um, it can take anywhere from three to four hours till it's done. Um, just gently chop it up and that's it. Um, you can do it in your skillet if you want to. I've got too much going on today for that. So um, anyway... So um, just once an hour, and then now I leave it alone for another hour. Just every hour I come in and do that, and um, that way it's I'm I I'm a minimalist in the kitchen, and this way I can keep being a minimalist. Okay, see you next time. Okay, now our chicken. It's been two hours. Um, see how it just be, kind of becomes a loaf, and that's not what I want. So I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit. I don't have to get too serious because we are going to, we're going to dry this out <clears throat> in a skillet to get it more rice-like. So um, I'll explain that part later. But first, we just got to get it cooked. And um, like I said, you could cook it in a skillet and that would be just fine. This is just how I do whenever I got other things going on. All right, it's been, so it's been two hours. And we're going to do one more hour. And like I said, we are going to have it in the skillet so it doesn't have to be like perfectly cooked. So I'll see you in one more hour. So the ground chicken is done. <clears throat> and now we're going to strain it into here because we got it. One, I need the broth. And two, we're making riced chicken. So riced chicken is just really um, cooked chicken that is dried out from being seared in the skillet. Um, like I said, you could cook it in, the, in, your, um, in your skillet the whole time. I just had too much to do today. So that just wasn't on my agenda. Um, but now I just pour it into here. Um, and the good thing about this is you need two cups of chicken broth. And um, now, we have made chicken broth. Let's see how much it is. Now, it looks like it's about one cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some water. I'm going to rinse this off in the sink until it gets to the number two. So give me just a second. Yep, we got two. So um, <clears throat> we've got a skillet, a paint. Oh, you're over there. Sorry. Uh, there you go. So now that it's been rinsed off a little bit, I'm going to put it into here. And now we're going to start the riced process. So you could use however much <clears throat> chicken you want. I <clears throat> Let me show you what I do. 
<clears throat> so I, when I have a recipe that I'm going to be tracking, um, I print off two copies. So I've got one over here that's nice and clean. And then I've got this one that I'm going to scribble all over. And then I can plug it into my tracker app. So I knew that I used one pound of ground chicken. And as far as the broth goes, um, that's going to be part of the ground chicken as far as macros go. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I've got everything here, but I didn't write amounts on it because I just wasn't really sure how much of this stuff I'm going to want. So it's all going to be a guessing game, to be quite honest, until I until I cook it the first time. So now let's go over here and I'll show you how I rice the chicken, make it into rice. So I've got my chicken in my skillet and I'm gonna turn my skillet on just a medium. Um, just so you know back here, one of my coworkers gave me a simmer pot and it has like um, oranges and some different smells in it. So that's what that is. So this has nothing to do with our food. I'm not I'm not going to be eating that. That's just uh, an aromatic that she made herself. So <clears throat> anyway, so I'm going to put this on medium right here. And the point of this is to cook out all the water that is left in the chicken. I understand some people are going to say, well, you could have done that if you just cooked it in the skillet. And you are right. So you cook it that way. Um, but now, I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to cook it. I'm just trying to dry it out. So now I'm just going to let this heat up and I'll just come and stir it around and stir it around and stir it around until it gets nice and dried out. A tip that I've used in the past is taking a paper towel and kind of smashing it against the, the chicken a little bit to help draw out some of that excess moisture. And uh, But again, you do it however it's gonna work. All, all you're wanting is cooked chicken that is not wet and I don't season it either because if you think about it rice is very bland and it takes on the flavors that you add to it so since we want this to be rice not any kind of special rice um, we are just wanting it just plain chicken so like I said now it's it's definitely drier I know you can if you if I wish I would have shown it before and after, but anyway, maybe I'll try to remember to do that. Hopefully, Editing Terry can do that. If not, you can tell it's already more dry. So now I just, like I said, now I'm just going to simmer it and let it dry out. I'll show you when it is the right, t the right texture. Um, I can't tell you how long it's going to take. I can tell you it's 1250 right now. So I'll try to remember to tell you what time it is when it's done. So then that way, just to give you an idea. Something I kind of do is, I don't really know how to explain it, but there's a sound that it makes when the wet chicken, it's a sizzle, but when the wet chicken is against the bottom and the sound changes, and when it changes, that's when I know to stir it. So just listen to it. I truly can't explain it. But as it dries out, you will hear less and less of that crackling sound that you hear when it first starts heating up. But then you'll hear it when you stir it in a new spot, a moist spot, touches the, the, the bottom of the pan. It's just kind of funny. It's, like I said, it's just something I've experienced. And like I said, we're not trying to like make it dark brown or anything, but you know, we just want it. Rice has a little bit of a texture to it, so we're just trying to um, dehydrate it a little bit, and um, it's getting better, but um, I'll let you know when it's done. Give me a little while longer. It's 12.56, in case I forget to tell you next time. It's been at least that long. Hopefully you can listen and hear this. As I'm shuffling it around, hopefully you can hear that little tinge of, of sizzle. As you scrape it or slide it over and new, new areas of meat hit that bottom, you hear it. So, it's getting close, honestly. So, I mean, you see how 
how um, how airy it is, light and airy, just like just like rice. So, and it is 101. I don't remember what time I told y'all it was when we started. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it quits, and I'm gonna put it in this. Uh, um, what is this thing? In this uh, corningware dish. Because that's something that later on when it's ready, getting close to serving time, I can set that down in the oven and heat it up and let it warm up. But right now we're just going to set it aside. we got other things to work on. All right. All right. I think I'm going to set this in my, in my refrigerator for now. When I am building a recipe... I set things on my scale so that way I know how much I'm using because I don't really know. Um, this is something that I just kind of experimenting with. So I know I'm going to be, I know I need to melt some ghee into my skillet, but I don't know how much it's going to be. So I'll zero it out with it on there and then I'll put that in there. So 37, I'd like it to be 45, then I know it's three servings. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 369. Ah, uh, 39 is a serving. Man, I'm doing math, y'all. Oh, wait, that says 37. Oh, 38. 38. All right, good enough. So... This way, I'll know that I use 39 grams. So later on, whenever I plug everything into my tracker app, I know exactly how much I'm using. So the recipe that I saw said, only they use butter. But so melt the, melt the ghee until it slowly melts. Or add ghee to the pan till it slowly melts. Where's my spoon? All right. Now, in the recipe I saw, they used flour. So, the ghee has melted. So, we're kind of making like a roux kind of thing. So, let me zero that out. So, this is carnivore crisp chicken breast flour. I have made um, my own uh, chicken chips in the past by using um, uh, lunch meat. But, uh, this is the one that they actually... Okay, it's on zero. This is the one I actually bought. So I'm going to put a big old hunk of it in there and see. So I chicken flour, I'll say 19 grams to start with. And I might end up adding more. Okay. But they do that to kind of thicken it up a little bit. Now, you guys, I know Etouffee has um, more than what we're putting in it. It has vegetables and tomatoes and all kinds of stuff. Well, that's not what we're going to add. So, I don't want that to burn. So, I'm going to go ahead and add in my, my two cups of broth. Just a second. So, this is the two cups of broth. Did you see me jump? Uh, uh, that startled me. <laughs> That's the two cups of broth. Now, I'm not going to have to look up or add broth because that literally is part of the one pound of ground chicken that I used. So, there's that. All right. So, hang on now. I bought the already cooked chicken or, or shrimp. So, that way I do not have to... Uh, Cook the shrimp. I went ahead and bought the one that was already cooked and deveined and all that stuff. So, in order to get this the etouffee flavor, that now again, listen, y'all, I ain't from Louisiana. I ain't Cajun. I'm just, I'm just Terry from Southeast Missouri having fun. So, anyway, in order to make this carnivore, as long as you lose, you use seasonings, um, we're going to be able to add some stuff. 
Now, my coworker had some the other day, and it looked like hers had cream in it a little bit. I don't know if that's a thing you put in it, but it's a thing I'm going to put in it. <clears throat> so, uh, so in order to get that, let me get this open just a second. Okay, so just to give it a little creamy texture, it's simmering down there. So now we're going to add some heavy cream. Again, I didn't write down how much. I'm just, I weighed it. I zeroed it out. We're just going to see. However much that is. Um, 150 grams. So, <clears throat> don't ask me. Please don't ask me measurements, y'all. I don't do measurements. I just do weight of everything. Because measurements are never the same. Okay. So, from what I saw, there are specific things that are in, um, etouffee. There's onions. There's celery. There is tomatoes. Um, uh, peppers, so we got the different kinds of pepper, um, pepper, oh, and garlic, garlic um, is in there, so, and then I've got some slap your mama, so because we're not doing all the things that, that you do for, um, for the etouffee, we're not going to be able to add peppers, but what we can do is add some ground black pepper, it might have been a little bit much, Terry, but that's all right. We can add some ground white pepper. Give me just a second. Sorry about that. I had an alarm going off for something else. And and garlic. I, like I said, this is just garlic powder. I thought about garlic salt, but I don't have any. And then, oh, 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 on the pepper. So I've got black pepper, white pepper. I'm going to put in just a little bit of crushed red pepper. I know it's spicy, but I don't want to add too much, but just a little bit of red black, red pepper. So it's kind of giving us the flavors without being the actual thing. Then onion, so this is onion salt. Hang on, I need to, this one's kind of messed. Anyway, so onion salt, which like I said, is going to take the place of onion. So hang on, let me do it this way because I got a little, I got a packet in there and I don't want to lose that. So, again, don't ask me how much seasoning I'm using, you guys. I need a lot of seasoning to my food because of the vid. Um, so, I know they use celery in a lot of things. Um, so, we got celery salt. So, celery salt. It might have been a lot too much. What is that? No, we don't need that. And then, of course... The Creole Slap Your Mama Season, Cajun Seasoning. I don't know what's in it. So if you can't have it, don't add it. You just got to do what's going to work for you. Please don't don't come at me in the comments saying, yeah, that's not this or that's not that. I don't care. I'm doing Terry Vor. You do you Vor. You do you Vor. So if it ain't carnivore, leave it out. If it ain't your carnivore, leave it out. So now I want to give this a little taste here. I know it's going to burn the heck out of my mouth, but. So really, you guys, I can't give amounts of seasoning. Oh, I missed time. I need to get some time. But let me see. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Now, if you are able to. They sell something called tomato bouillon with chicken. Oh, tomato bouillon with chicken flavor. If you can have this, you could give that'll help give you that rich uh, tomatoey flavor. I don't know what you can and cannot have. I am gonna put a little bit in mine. And uh, guys, it will be okay to over season this because remember, we didn't season our chicken, so our our, our rice. We did not season our riced chicken. So it's going to be blander than bland. So um, all the flavor is going to be in this right here. And in a little while, we'll add our shrimp to it. But let me see what else we have to... Okay, so we did our salt, the celery, the peppers. We did this, that salt. We did garlic. Oh, thyme. I need to go grab some thyme. Hang on just a second. Okay, we'll put a little thyme in here. Whoa. Okay, we're putting a lot of thyme in there. <clears throat> Put a lot of time into this. Yes, we gotta develop the flavors. So now I don't want it to cook, cook, 
but I just want it to kind of simmer. So my medium, I think my medium is, is um, it, well, it's five. So I'm going to put it down to like three and a half and just let it simmer. I want it to thicken up a little bit and reduce. So, um, so it's 120. I'll tell you what time it is when we get done. I may end up adding a little more of that chicken flour to it, but we'll see. Just a heads up, at this stage, now that I know how much all the things weigh that I've added to it, at this stage, I can plug it into my tracker app and see how many portions it's going to make. I have a goal for how I want my calories to be. Um, I want it to be around 700. So, um, so what I'll do is now I will take the chicken flour and the chicken and the ghee and the heavy cream and... Yeah, I think that's the only ones. Anyway, I'll sit down over there and I will write this down or I will plug this into my tracker app so then I can see how many portions I need this to be for my for my meal prep. But that's how I do things like that when I'm doing a, a fun batch experiment for my meal prep. So I don't want to reduce it too much because I don't know how the shrimp's going to add it. <clears throat> Guys, I am really such a... I just want to shake myself. This is cooked shrimp, peeled and deveined. It says tail on. I thought it was tail off. Such a rookie mistake, but that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I'll just get my hands messy. Well, no, I won't. I'll just stab it with a fork and pull it off that way. So I've got two bags of these. Each one is 12 ounces. Um. Sorry, um, they, I will have the recipe in the description of this video, but I know that it's hard to sometimes take a snapshot of the things that are down in the video of the YouTube channel. If you ever, ever want a copy of one of my recipes, my email is always in the description of my videos also. So just feel free to shoot me an email and say, hey, can I have a copy of this recipe or or um, whatever? Um, Cause yeah, you, know, you may want a pattern of one of the hat the hat that I made. Um, but anyway, so yeah, feel free to just shoot me an email because I hate doing a snapshot. That just messes with my brain. I want something that I can print off and mark off and edit and can't do that. So all right, this totally cooled this down. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit and I'm going to bring it back to a simmer. And as it's, you know, works up to a simmer and everything, don't be afraid to scoop out the liquid and taste it because, you know, if it's not strong enough flavor or if it's too weak or whatever it is, don't be afraid to, uh, you know, do that to taste it and add more seasonings. Or again, guys, remember, I need more seasoning. So don't add as much as I do until you you know you're gonna like it because I need more than what other people need so don't just do it because I do it colder than diddly but man is that good oh my stars that is delicious now while that's coming back up to a simmer I'm gonna go ahead and put my riced chicken in the oven not to cook just to warm up Really quick, what I did with this, because again, this is my meal prep. Actually, I'm going to leave this lid off. Um, what I did with this was I poured this out onto something, and then I zeroed out this bowl, and I put the chicken back in it. So I now know there's 230 grams of chicken, riced chicken. And I did that so later on, whenever I divide this out into my servings, I know that, I can, that with all the macros, I need, um, what did I write down? Look, don't make me mad, y'all. Okay, I need 76 grams per each of the servings. This is going to make three servings altogether. So 76 grams will be with this. So like I said, I just need that because you all know I'm, I'm obsessive about making sure things are even. I don't want Tuesday's Terry to get more than Monday's Terry or Friday's Terry to have less than Tuesday's Terry. So I'm all about making sure I'm getting enough. And yes, let me tell you how things were handled as a child. <clears throat> Whenever there were three of us girls, and if they brought home a candy bar or something, and we would be arguing over it, one person cut it, 
if there were two of us, one person cut it, the other got to choose which side they wanted. So let me tell you, we broke out the ruler and the millimeters and everything. So that was the rule in our house. So whoever cut it, the other one got to pick. So, yeah, so I am very, I want them all the same. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit when this, this thing's still quite chilly. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. I want to explain to you all my process because we know that I'm pretty regimented with what I do. Um, so what I did was I, because I didn't want to have like 20 shrimp and 5 shrimp and 12 shrimp, so I scooped out all the shrimp into these containers first and foremost, and I waited till all three was within a few grams of each other. Then I poured in the liquid. And so right now, I am at the stage where I put a little bit of what's left over in here. So now, because um, I do this before I show you guys um, how it looks on the plate. Because, you know, I, wanted, I want it to be right. So like this one's 327. This one's 297. This is the lightest. This one's 336. So 330, 320. So I think I'm going to see if I can get this to like maybe 340. Okay, well 366. So this is literally what I do. I don't have the chicken in there yet. So I said 366. Oop. Hold up. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. That's 364. Oh, now three. Well, it's close enough. Let's see what this one is. I don't have to have them with exact, but I definitely want them as close as possible. All right. So there's 383. That's going to make an even 390 if we can. Okay. 390. I'm just being honest with y'all because y'all need to know like how I really do things. Okay, so 390 and 390. Now this is just a lot of leftover seasoning. I'm just going to splash it in and let that be that. So there you go. That is how I truly do it. Because this way, I will know exactly what my portions are for when it's time. And this way, whenever I show you it nice and pretty on the plate, I know that I have all of them equal and I can get that ready. So now that I've shown you that portion, now I'll go on and, and set it out on a plate so you can see how pretty it can look. I got to tell you, funny. So Gloria got me a set of these containers. Well, three of them are in the dishwasher and I'm too impatient to wait till they're done. And these are actually steamers. And so you could put vegetables in it and steam them in the microwave. But because I'm so impatient, I went ahead and put this, these into here. So, um, yeah, that's, that's just how I roll. I'm not patient. So, but this will really work well because I'm going to microwave these at work. So, uh, anyway, but this way I get to know exactly um, the exact measurements for my, for my macros and for the charting and stuff. So, oh, wait, I ain't putting the lid on it yet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get my plate together, and then I'll let you see how pretty it is, and then and I'll put the rest of it in there. Before I get this started, I want you to see the rice, how it looks right now. It's kind of brown, and or, or the riced chicken. So that is a perfect texture. Look at that. It's nice. It's dry. It is perfect. So that is what we're going to use for our rice. So... See how it is? It's just like it's just like rice. And then you could you could fry it. You could you could make an Asian something. You could make a make it into Spanish rice. You can make it into whatever you want. So now I'm gonna get everything set up. But I just want you to see I want you to see the texture of this rice. Y'all, there just ain't gonna be a nice picture of it. It's just too. I didn't reduce it enough. But I don't care. It's gonna taste good, and that's all I care about. So we've got our, um, our riced chicken in there. So that's how that looks. Mm -hmm. I definitely should have, what got you down there for? I definitely should have um, two things. Reduce the sauce more and bought shrimp that doesn't have a tail on it. That's all right, that's all right. 
All right, now let's try it with the shrimp and the chicken, since it is chicken and shrimp a duvet. Gotta get the tail out of there. Yeah, that's got a kick, guys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. How fun. Good job, Terry. Good job. Yeah, buddy. That's really good. All right. You saw how I made it. Oh, macro. Sorry, y'all. Made three servings per serving. It's 644 calories, 64 protein. Total carbs is 3.3. .3. And fat is 41. So I am super stoked about this one, guys. That is delicious. And it's carnivore. Yay us. We done good, guys.